corruption or descent of these fallen angels to earth after the flood of Noah. Because when you read about what happened on earth after the flood, only Noah and his family were saved through the flood, by the way. Everybody else in the whole world was wiped out. Just eight souls, eight people, Noah and his family survived. Then they landed, uh, you know, nine months or a year later, whatever it was, uh, they began to propagate again. The people began to multiply in the earth again. Then we have the story about Moses and the children of Israel going down to Egypt. They stayed there for a few hundred years. Then they tried to get out of Egypt. Uh, Moses was trying to get them out with the, all the plagues of frogs, etc., etc. Then finally Moses led them out through the Red Sea. They went in and they wandered in the wilderness. And it says Moses sent in 12 spies to spy out the promised land, the land which was originally promised to Abraham. For, for his descendants. And he sent out the 12 spies. And when the 12 spies came back, they said to him, there's no way we can take this land, Moses. The place is full of these giants. It says we saw the Nephilim there. It says we saw the sons of Anak who come of the Nephilim. And it said, compared to these guys, we look, we look like grasshoppers. So because of their unbelief, there was only Joshua and one other guy who wanted to go in and said, yeah, we can take this place. The rest of them said, there's no way we can take this place. So they wandered in the desert for 40 years because of their unbelief. Then, under the leadership of Joshua, when Moses was dead, they went in and they invaded the promised land. They defeated uh, the giants who were all over the land at this time. And they, they took over the land. And it talks about Og. It, gives, it, it, it tells us in the old scriptures, that they killed a fellow called Og, who was the, the king of Bashan at that time. And his iron bedstead was, oh my goodness, it gives us the dimensions of it. You know, we, we're still working in feet and, and inches and feet over there. But his bed was like about four meters long, or no, about five meters long and about three meters wide. It was huge, mm. uh, the, the, the king of this guys. I mean, this, you know, you don't want to wake up in, in, in bed in the morning uh, beside this fella. Henrik, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's unless, right. Un, un, unless you're inclined that way. And I mean, I know you were talking about your bosoms earlier, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in your sexuality. But <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you want to wake up in the morning with a, a guy who's about like uh, five meters long with his arm around you. No, or no. maybe you do. Maybe you do. I don't know. No way. No way. <laughs> I'm just joking. Just joking. Yes, yes. But, but this guy, so there was a second eruption of these fallen angels after the flood. That's the point. Now, we're not told, here's an interesting point, and I make this in my, in my book, uh, The Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse. We're not told that the, that the angels that fell after the flood of Noah, that they are locked up in this place called the bottomless pit, or Tartarus. So I speculate in my book that these guys might, guys might still be at large. And I speculate that perhaps these are the guys who, you know, were over here in, in Ireland at one time, who perhaps moved to South America. And then as, as the onslaught of civilization went out across the world, then maybe they went over to places like Cambodia, and maybe they're hiding out still in some distant, dark, deep forest out in the mountains of Cambodia or somewhere or in the depths of Africa or whatever. I, I'm not sure, but those guys might still be at large. Hmm. So, yeah, because what you're saying here is that it's not only a Middle Eastern phenomenon, so to speak, it's world worldwide society. Do you think that that is because they migrated from place to place, or are we potentially talking about a race of uh, beings that have uh, access to advanced technology, potentially flying machines, in order to, to keep the whole um, the global grid, as it were, that they've created around the world with many of these megalithic uh, sites? What do you think? Very possibly. I think you're right. Well, let me give you one instance. I, I spoke to you a few minutes ago about Oscar Wilde's father, uh, Sir William Wilde, who wrote two books on the ancient history of Ireland. And in one of the books, he talked about the, the two most ancient of races that came to Ireland uh, back several hundred years BC, I think. And they were, one was called the Tuta de Danon, and the others were called the Tuta Fairbullocks. And he had a note, and he said, he was speaking about the Tuta de Danon, and he said, main, many ancient writings say that the Tuta de Danon were not real human beings at all, but were what he calls sprites or fairies. Mm -hmm. And sprites and fairies are ye olde English for, for spirits or, or fairies, and that they were expert in the occult, in black magic, in necromancy, and in, in, in uh, black arts. And I was discussing this uh, with a, a young Christian guy from Belfast uh, a few years ago, and I was saying to him that, you know, William Wilde said that 
that, that, that these guys were in Ireland, you know, spirits. And this, this may be the Druids. They were into human sacrifice and all that. Uh, they may have been called the Druids, but they were into the occult and magic and all this. And he said, that's right, Paddy. He said, it wasn't the snakes that St. Patrick drove out of Ireland. It was the serpents. See? Yeah. Subtle difference. Yeah. So St. Patrick came in. He was an evangelical Christian guy who, who teached the Bible and preached the Word of God. He wasn't a Catholic at all. Catholicism only came in here around uh, 1100 AD, and then they ruined the place, you know, and it's, yeah. Still, yeah. it's still ruined today. Yeah. But Patrick was a, a Christian guy, and maybe he came in preaching the, the Christianity, and he chased the serpents, as it were, out of Ireland. Mm. And then that's perhaps when they went across the, the sea, because they will tell you, history will tell you, Henrik, that these places in like uh, Guatemala and Machu Picchu, Picchu and places like that, they reckon they were occupied up until just about 400 years ago. Mm, that's right. But then these guys, then these guys go and they, so maybe they're sort of hiding out. Now, I don't know how many of these guys there are, but they're supernatural beings, they're super powerful. So they don't need, I don't think spirit beings per se need flying machines maybe they do i don't know if they do because they're spirits they can appear they can disappear i've met lots of people who've met these guys hmm. so you know that that's what goes on so that's who i think uh, uh kicked saint patrick kicked out of ireland the serpents and that ties in with the serpent of genesis 3 see we've always been talking about adam and eve and the apple and the snake but it doesn't match mention anything in genesis about an apple or a snake it talks about a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it talks about a serpent. And the serpent is the one we're told up in the New Testament that seduced Eve. That's the literal Greek word. And the serpent is another name for this guy I spoke earlier. Twice in the, in the, in the book of Revelation, he's called the dragon and the serpent, who is the devil and Satan. And, and Satan is, is a, a beautiful-looking, created spirit being. He's an angel, probably very attractive but he's a spirit being. He's very attractive. Uh, serpent in Hebrew means t to hiss, to enchant, a bright shining thing. So it, w it was nothing to do. Adam and Eve were didn't eat an apple and thereby, you know, create the fall of man. It says they were seduced by this beautiful looking man, bright shining, powerful, supernatural, superhuman human being who seduced them. And by the way, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the sin in the Garden of Eden, was is that, that Eve had sex with this serpent and with Adam, and that she got pregnant with fraternal twins. Mm. That, now, this is not an unusual thing, because about 10 years ago, a prostitute in um, New York had twins, and one of them was black and one of them was white, because she had sex with a black man and a white man, one after the other. So it talks about Cain, who was the first murderer, and it says he was of that wicked one because Cain slew his own brother. He killed his own brother. He was the first murderer. So there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the sin in the Garden of Eden was that the serpent, i.e. Satan, this beautiful-looking, bright-shining angel of light, he's called an angel of light, had sex, seduced her, had sex with her, Adam had sex with her, a sort of a menage a trois, if you will, she got pregnant with twins, had Cain and Abel, and then when they grew up, Cain murdered his own brother, hence he was the first murderer, and that's why it says Cain, who was of this wicked one. So forget about your apple and your all that stuff. That's all just, uh, you know, kindergarten rubbish. Mm -hmm. See, interesting. So you painted the, the background picture for us there, potentially what has uh, happened, at least through the mythological record and how this has been transformed and all that. But what about if we go, go into a little bit about the, the purpose of, of the, uh, well, we're specifically focusing on the pyramids for now, but I guess this could be uh, supplanted across over all the megalithic sites that you've been mentioning so far. What What is the purpose of that? You mentioned as, that there were potentially astronomical sites. They measure uh, calendar years, they're measuring winter, summer solstice, etc. Uh, but is there anything more to the pyramids and, and, and what are they being used for, do you know? Well, let me, let me answer your last question first. And this has to do with the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is in Egypt, and what that means, and, and uh, its significance, etc., etc. And this fits in with a very enigmatic prophecy, which is in the book of Isaiah which says, in that day there shall be an altar and a pillar in the midst of the land of Egypt and a, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And, should, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness 
unto God in that day. Now, the expression in that day 